Okay, this is a question, of course, of good versus maybe bad culture, which is a rather binary way, I am sure, of looking at it. Yeah. I mean, is, is there, from your vantage point, you advise many, many chief executives, many, many large corporations. What, what does good culture look like? And is good culture sitting here in, in London different from good culture in Hong Kong or Singapore or New York? Uh, yeah, great question. And my answer is to go back to where I started, which is that there is a universal formula for what it means to be human. We see that operating in our family lives, in our friendships, in our neighborhoods, in our community and citizen experience. And we cannot avoid thousands of years of civilization and evolution of our species in understanding what that means. Now, we do have a variety of different cultures across the world, but many of the people in this audience, as well as myself, have traveled widely. And do you know what? I haven't yet visited a country where I haven't experienced family, friendship, neighborhood, and community. So we must keep returning not to this atomistic, Newtonian, deterministic view of what business is all about, because what you then get is a sense of um, grip, control, and robotic compliance, which is closer to a totalitarian or feudal state than the emerging democratic uh, and caring societies that we find generally are most important. Now, this may sound a bit wacky, but I will assure you, and you will know, and you'll be buying goods and services from major corporations all over the world who already understand this. Some of the newer businesses are absolutely founded on the, the, the proposition that if I serve you, my customer, well, that is my purpose, and the outcome, if I deliver those goods and services at lowest logical cost, is amazing economic value creation. So that connection between who we are as a species and understanding of our history is absolutely critical. There are four questions we have to ask and answer in, as individuals, and then four different lenses we need to examine within culture. So let me take you through those, because I'm answering the question in terms yep, of absolutely. the Q&A. Anyone, anyone who says four questions, it always makes me nervous, because yes. uh, each one will then need an answer. Well, for all, <laughs> look, Kamal, all philosophers You are know, an academic professor, so I will, uh, allow, I will allow you some leeway. Philosophers <laughs> just know questions. We don't know answers. <laughs> the first question is, why do we exist? And the collective... Roger, just before we start this... That's, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a very it's a good question. question. <laughs> it's a big question. And Roger has put certainly on the table some big questions. We'll Roger, yeah, right. could, you, could you imagine, could you imagine having this conversation with a hard-bitten Wall Street trader who earns $20 million a year and is just sodding focus on ensuring that he hits his targets or her targets and that his team hits her targets, and you start saying, why do we exist? <laughs> They're going to laugh through their braces at you, no? Um, I'm sure some do, but I'll tell you something else. The majority of them take that opportunity with relish because they actually are deeply unhappy with the vicious cycle that their lives have become. That the pursuit of money for its own sake is a denial of what money is. So if you, I'm going to do my £20 note trick. Elizabeth's seen this already. No, he doesn't give it to you. You don't get it, Martin. Okay, Martin, we've only, we've only got So an this is a £20. Pound. So. Okay, this right. is, bear, bear with me. Yes, you. yes. This is a £20. I don't pound. have a lighter, by the way, but anyway. This, <laughs> this is a £20 note sterling. Okay, I'm just getting it right yep. for the camera. Underneath the words Bank of England, it says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of £20. The key word there is promise. On the back of every dollar bill, it says, in God we trust. It doesn't say it on the back of this. And Warren Buffett explains that it says that because you can't trust the Fed, which is quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've, you've exhausted your time now, I think. <laughs> so what is money? Hey, Roger, yeah, good, well, come on. Just I've got to keep this thing going. Yeah, in a, okay. in a po I've, I've been asked to do a thought-provoking discussion, <laughs> which, is, which is, this certainly is, but yes, okay. <laughs> this has no intrinsic value. It's a piece of paper with some colourful ink and a bit of foil in it. Money is 
virtue. It is based on the promises we trust. If you break promises and you destroy trust, you destroy financial value, and that is what's happened in the banking and financial crisis. So to say that the virtue, the morals of human life have nothing to do with this is a denial of what money is truly all about. So that's part of my answer. Am I going to be able to answer, give you the other three questions? In a sentence each, yeah. Okay. In a sentence each. So why do we exist? I'm going to have to turn into Jeremy Paxman quite soon, but <laughs> at the moment I'm still being Kamal. <laughs> why do we exist and why does our organization exist? The answer that I get from boards and CEOs is to serve our clients and customers for the collective one. The second one is what are the values we believe in that help us to make difficult decisions in moments that matter or moments of truth? The third one is how do we think and make decisions and judgments? And there's a methodology around that. Then finally, how do our actions derive from a clarity of purpose, knowing what our values are, and <coughs> also knowing how we, think, how we think and make decisions. How do those actions sustain our purpose? So it's a circular thing. Now, please, with me, four architectures that we examine. The political architecture of your organization, I ask a board, is your organization democratic? And I don't mean an employee-owned organization. I mean, does every employee have a voice in this organization? Because if they don't, why are you employing them? Secondly, the social architecture of the organization. Describe the quality of the relationships you have within your culture. Is it an adult-to-adult -adult set of relationships? Or is it parent-child, very uh, sort of directing and so on? And the next one is the economic architecture. How is value created within your business? And the fourth one is what is the operating model and how does it help connect all of those together? So four questions and four lenses and architecture.